Well, hello, and welcome to the Path Podcast. Mm -hmm. What episode is this? 77. 77. 77. All right, this is number 77, and we're glad you're here. I'm Derek. And I am Jason. And we are going to help you uh, walk down the path today uh, by looking at what we talked about on Sunday. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm the host today because Jason was the (laughs) preacher, so he's going to help us uh, have some handles to hold on to about rescue in the king from second mm-hmm. samuel 7 and so jason help us out yeah so just um just a couple of things just to kind of recap what we talked about in second samuel chapter 7 is where god institutes his covenant with david um that you know some things had been had been leading up to that point and um and some things have been pointing that way so just to kind of set the stage uh back in chapter 5 and uh, before David had gone and led the armies of Israel to defeat the Philistines, which had been the major foe for uh, for the Israelites for quite some time. He goes and defeats the Philistines. They had also stolen the ark, and so the ark was in Philistia, and um, David gets to defeat the Philistines and get the ark and bring it back to Jerusalem and um, and that you know obviously the ark is where that that's where the presence of God was contained or not contained but that was where the presence of God dwelled uh, among the people that was why it was always in the tabernacle because God was in the midst of the people um, and so things are great in Jerusalem and in Israel that things are going great for David things are going great for the people it's a prosperous time things are going well and David one night David and Nathan Nathan is the prophet who spoke to um, who, who spoke to the people for God, so basically like the national pastor, if you will. Um, and uh, they're, they're sitting at the palace, and David has an idea, and he says, hey, what? I have this really nice palace made out of cedar wood, and it's nice, and it's beautiful, and the ark is just sitting in a tent down there. What, what's up with that? we got to change that, you know? Uh, and Nathan even tells me, he's like, that sounds like a great idea. Yeah, let's do everything that's in your heart, is what Nathan tells David. And um and so it's this, it's this really great idea. I think it comes from, a, from an honest place, but uh, God has other ideas. And he wants to, uh, number one, he wants to remind David that, hey, I, I'm in control here. I'm the one calling all the shots. Even though, you know, that was a nice thought, but I'm the one calling the shots here. And number two, I've got some different plans that, that you don't know about yet. Uh, and so we get to see God's rescue plan be kind of continued or... Um, kind of God reminds the people of that rescue plan and there's there was three ways that we saw that that um, God's rescue plan is based on his covenant love for his people and so you see in chapter 7 there's all these callbacks to the wording of other covenants before where uh, when God spoke to Abraham in Genesis 12 or when God spoke to Moses and the Israelites uh, at Mount Sinai in Exodus that there was these um, promises that God had made to the people of Israel through Abraham and through Moses that God kind of re-ups here uh, with David, that there's this sort of, um, it it keeps getting more and more specific. Like when you, when you first see the covenant there, excuse me, um, at creation and with Abraham, there's like this kind of, um, the, the details get a little clearer and then the details get a little more clearer at, uh, at Mount Sinai. And then they get even more clear here with David and, um, God has never forgotten his covenant love for his people. His, the, the way you see it, your translation may say uh, his steadfast love or his loving kindness or his covenant love. All of those, it's the same word in Hebrew that we've talked about over the last few months here. It's the, the hesed of God. That, um, it's that loving kindness that, you, mm-hmm. that we see. It's like the theme of Scripture. It's over and over and over again throughout all the Bible. Um, and so uh, God has this covenant love for his people to, to remind David, hey, I appreciate your plan, but that's not my plan. However, you are my, you are my people, and I love you. Uh, and so I'm going to continue to rescue you. I'm going to continue uh, to, to, uh, to use the world around you and my plan to bring you back towards me. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was based on his covenant love. We also saw that God's rescue plan involves his people representing him on earth. And that's where you see God talking to David about the fact. He's like, hey, I, you used to be a shepherd, and I pulled you out of the field so that you could be a prince over my people. And that you would be, um, like he, he says, um, 
uh, I put you that you should be a prince over my people Israel, and I have been with you wherever you went and have cut off all your enemies from before you. And while he's talking specifically to David, it's to the people as a whole that, hey, listen, you're my people. You're the ones who are representing me to the entire world. And, um, and I think that's something that um, we shouldn't overlook because we now as the church, we are God's representatives here on earth. And um, so God, th- this plan of rescue continues to move through us. That was when we talked about how what God talks about here is still affecting humanity today, that we are still God's representatives. We are still the, the conduit through which grace and mercy run. It runs through the church and through Christ followers. And, um, and that's something that, that we shouldn't take lightly <laughs> because, mm-hmm. because it has a, the way that we live has a huge effect on what we are representing God to be to the mm-hmm. people. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it's, it's important to remember that, that um, we, we, have a, we have a very important role to play in God's rescue plan, which sounds kind of crazy because we're the ones who have been rescued, but we mm-hmm. also have a role to play, mm-hmm. uh, which is important. And so while we are not in any way, shape, or form, let's go ahead and get this out of the way. We are not the ones who do the rescuing, mm-hmm. but we are the ones who get to share the message of rescue. We get to say, hey, that's why it says in you know, Second Corinthians that God's given us the ministry of reconciliation, yeah. right? That um, That... That ministry of reconciliation is the rescue plan. It's God reconnecting us with himself. And so we get to go out and say, hey, you feel disconnected? I know how you can get reconnected. Let me show you. Mm-hmm. God is the one who's going to reconnect you, but let me let me bring you to him so you can see that uh, and, how, and how we get to um, – the fact that we get to be his representatives – that's that's just cool to me. I know cool is such a that's like mm-hmm. an overused or inadequate word, but it's the best thing I can come up with. It's so cool that God allows us to come alongside him and work with him, which is so cool. Uh and then the final thing we saw through through David's uh, interaction with God is that uh God's rescue plan gives us hope in the face of hopelessness. Mm-hmm. Um because <clears throat> we talked about if we were to keep reading that it, it would be easy for you to look through the history of, of Israel after this and say, well, that didn't work out the way it was supposed to. Because David, like God promises that um, the line of David will never leave from the, from the throne. And yet there are centuries where there is no Davidic king on the throne. There's nobody from the line of David that's on the throne in Israel. Um, and so you could look at it and say, well, this is hopeless. God, God has forgotten us. He, he broke his promise, right? And yet, there's this ultimate person that um, that this covenant points to, and that's Jesus. That Jesus would be the one who would ultimately be on the throne forever. And so, um, for if if you look through, um, if you read through all the prophets, if you read through um, that, you're going to talk this week about that intertestamental period, and it kind of dovetails with this really well that there's still hope in Israel because all of the prophets look forward to there's a Davidic king who's going to sit on the throne we're still holding on to that promise that that God made to David there's going to be a king one day that's going to come back and a messiah that's going to uh, that's going to save us and so it provides hope this this uh, this rescue plan that God gives through David um, and so for us I think that kind of the handles to hold on to is that we should remain hopeful that um I, you know, I don't want to beat a dead horse, but we've, you know, we've talked about needing hope over the last two years, and as the difficulty of pandemic has has uh, come along. But I think it's good for us to remind, even in the, what seemed like, from a human standpoint, the best of times, we still need to hold on to God for our hope. He still needs to be the source of our hope. But then also, the fact that we are God's representatives here on earth, so we are hopeful people. But we've also got to be about sharing the gospel. Mm-hmm. We've got to share that minist- that or that rescue plan with with other people. And so it's this internal call to hope, and this external call to go. Like we we hope in God, and we go and share the the rescue plan uh, with the world around us. And that's kind of the things that I saw in that passage to to hold on to. Yeah, that that internal versus and coupled with that external. Mm-hmm. I mean it. You know the old adage: <clears throat> if you had the cure to cancer, yeah, you know that the hope that that would instill in people, mm-hmm. you wouldn't hoard it to yourself. You wouldn't keep it to yourself. You would take it and go with it. Right. We have e- infinitely greater news. Yeah, yeah. That has been entrusted unto us. You know, mm-hmm. to um, that rescue, not just here and now in this life, yeah, but in the life to come, is available to people. Right. Why wouldn't we? 
take that and go wherever we could to let people know hope is found in Jesus. Rescue is right. found in Jesus. And so, yeah, I mean, you know, that, and that we get to be a part of that is huge. Yeah. You know, it is cool. Yeah. Because, um, because we are the body of Christ, we're the embodiment of Christ for the world. Yeah. Um, he's our head still, I mean, but we, we are his body. We are, we, we are carrying out his functions yeah. as the local church. So God has given us a representation here in Lafayette mm-hmm. and surrounding communities of his kingdom, of, yeah. of who he is, of his covenant promise, of this age-old truth and this age-old rescue plan that is finally you know, culminated in Jesus and, and completed in Jesus yeah. that we can go and tell. And so that's, you know, that's why we stress, hey, this Easter, invite people to come and listen to this message of hope and listen to this message of the resurrection of Jesus Christ right. and what he's ac- accomplished on your on behalf of those who trust in him that 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 salvation is available unto those uh that that, that feel unredeemable or seem like uh, there's no hope yeah there is hope right and we carry that we're the carriers absolutely and, I, and messengers and I, of that yeah i totally agree with you and i think one of the things that's that's really incredible about god's rescue plan is that it should serve to break us of our selfishness that because so often we want to just hoard things right and um, like you said, to hoard that. And we, we've we been called to go and share. Like, not just called. We've been commanded to go mm-hmm. and share this rescue plan with others. And, and that's something that we cannot fall flat in doing. Well, that, I think, it bears as a good challenge for mm-hmm. everyone as we close this. Yeah. Part of being on the path is bringing other people into it for uh, with you. And so, uh, thank you for joining us. We want to hear from mm-hmm. you. Connect with us. Uh, via our email address, the path at LafayetteFirst.life. Mm-hmm. We'd love to hear what you have to say about these things. Engage with us, correspond with us. We'd love to have your feedback. Uh, but as for now and into the future, as we continue down the path, I'm Derek. And I'm Jason. And we'll see you next time as we continue down the path.